Hey guys, I just forced myself to watch Trailer Park Boys, the movie, for the second time. Um, the first time I watched it, I don't know if I was able to finish it. I think I got like halfway through and I had to turn it off because it was just so bad. But this time I made myself sit through the entire thing, I paid attention, and honestly, we're going to assume right away that you know something about the franchise and you've watched a couple of episodes at least, okay? That is how I'm going into this review. Um, you know, obviously the movie's biggest hurdle is the fact that it's ignoring the TV series. It's like its own alternate universe where they have a different actor for Trinity and they have other continuity issues besides that. And the storylines that either have already been told or are about to be told in the series are either being retread or like said here before they actually happen. So it is a very weird timeline. And I don't even care to think about it personally. My head canon, I don't, I don't regard this as canon. It probably is, but I don't regard it as canon in my head. It just doesn't make sense if it is. Um, so, yeah. Basically, Ricky and the boys are... Um, <laughs> again, I'm not gonna... You know, you ha go watch my Trailer Park Boys, the series review. I've reviewed all 12 seasons. Go watch that if you want to learn more about the show. This is assuming that you're already an existing fan. So basically the boys, they're going for another big dirty as they tend to do, but this time they're really putting an emphasis on that, um, that word probably because they want the movie to be specifically put in a certain um, genre on movie websites. That's kind of my sneaking suspicion. So they keep using the word big dirty because it's supposed to be one big score, but in reality it's just, you know, the boys are just up to their normal antics. But um, they're taking it like movie seriously. Again, it has a very strange vibe, this film. Because um, in the series, this would just be one of those episodes where it's just something they're doing. It's not like the big dirty or anything. But anyways, I'm going to go with it. Um, so basically, in the cinema, there is this change machine. And they're going to break the change machine and take all the change home with them. And somehow, in their minds, they think that gets them retired for life. Yeah, that's not really the way things work. But um, you're supposed to believe that. I also want to specifically mention that like the, the best parts about Trailer Park Boys aren't really utilized. You know, Leahy's barely drunk and he's barely on screen, he doesn't have a lot of speaking lines. George Green is basically just a cameo, he's not even like a character. Ted is there for some reason. I thought Ted, the fact that Ted's there does help out with the timeline a little bit, but I don't know. Again, he's not really utilized. Uh, J-Rock, again, is just a cameo. T, just a cameo. Sarah, just a cameo. So, all of the characters, it really is just, since it's a movie, I guess, it's not really an ensemble anymore. It's really focused on our three boys. And here's the two positive things that I have to say. First of all, the fact that Trevor exists, okay? So Trevor, like the actor Michael Jackson had an issue off, off um, behind the scenes with the show's creators, or I don't forget. Um, so he basically just disappears for season seven, so... They, they make up some excuse in season 7, so he's just gone and the show severely gets hurt because of that. So, he didn't get a lot of time to talk, but the fact that I get to see Trevor's face, that, that has some value to it. So, the fact that Trevor exists is huge to me. Um, and also the other, what was the other positive thing I was going to say? Oh yeah, Bubbles. Bubbles is closer to his prototype form. He's not this insufferable, whiny little, I mean... They really overplay the autistic side of him in the later seasons as well. So the fact that he's just he's just a quirky guy who likes cats, you know, and he, he's not complaining and whining constantly. He's not doing that stupid voice he does all the time. There's no conky bullshit. So that is a positive for me. So I think Bubbles is a positive, and I think Trevor's a positive. But Trevor just simply existing. He's barely in the movie. Corey's barely in the movie. So, yeah. I mean, Randy's barely in the movie. There really is... All the main characters are just really not, not really in it. Um, so I wouldn't even go as far as saying calling it like an extended episode, which is what I hoped for. I hoped for an extended episode, but what I got was like really a corporate product that was hollow and so cheap and just tried to, it just wanted to be a movie so bad. They're going for these cinematography angles, these camera angles. They're putting in these popular music choices that just feel off to me. Um, They've also got plenty of other side characters that we never see or hear from again in the future, so making this movie even more of a black sheep than it already is. I think the, the other main plot of this film is uh, the fact that Ricky's going to marry Lucy, but um, I, I feel like that's been done a hundred times in this series already, so if you're going to make a movie, maybe pick something a little more original. 
Uh, and I think Cyrus should have been in here as well. I think Cyrus should have been the uh, the pimp, basically, of the strip club. I don't know who that random guy was, but I I think Cyrus, I mean, I don't, he felt like a Cyrus clone. Why not just have the actual Cyrus? So, yeah. Cyrus is not in this at all, if you're wondering, and I was very, I was really looking for him. I was thinking, okay, this movie's so stupid that maybe Cyrus could save it, but he never shows up. So, yeah, just forgettable, disposable, corporate product, trying too hard. It thinks nudity is more important than emotions. I would much rather just see the boys saying I love you to each other than, like, a bunch of topless women in a strip club. They're just trying so hard to be greasy. It's just... The, the, the show, the show is just naturally charming and naturally charismatic and funny, you know, but here it's like, it just feels so processed and not, not authentic. You know, the original series, it feels authentic. It feels like they're real humans at times. Like, it doesn't feel like we're watching characters. It feels like we're watching improv actors who are truly believe they are those characters. But in here, it's like, it's just, you know, fame, a once beloved, well, still beloved, uh, cult show has now been turned into this SwearNet thing. And even though this was made in 2006, it still feels like SwearNet to me. But honestly, even though this was directed by Mike Clattenburg, this is worse than SwearNet. I think this is probably the worst of all of Trailer Park Boys content to, has to offer. But I will reevaluate that once I've seen them all because I do not remember the other movies very clearly. So I'm gonna go watch them now. And I know for a fact they're not as bad as this, I believe, right? I've heard th good things about um, good night, say good night to the bad guys or something. Um, don't legalize it, it might be alright as well. And I've heard good things about the Christmas special, so this probably is the worst of all Trailer Park Boys, which is funny. It, well, I guess it's not funny actually, it's, it's kind of sad that Trailer Park Boys, the movie, is the worst thing Trailer Park Boys has ever done. And it's just because they're trying to introduce people who aren't Canadian, who aren't, you know, affiliated with these kinds of uh, comedy and stuff, and it just it just annoys the existing fans for all the reasons I've already talked about, and I don't know. Maybe something like this could draw in someone who's never seen Trailer Park Boys, but I kind of, eh. I don't know. Even if I've never seen Trailer Park Boys before, I think I still would have hated this movie, to be honest. But we'll never know, because I will never have that experience. Thank God. Uh, anyways, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. Do not recommend it at all. Don't recommend it for existing fans. Don't, don't recommend it for people new to the show. There's no reason to watch it, it's a complete waste of time, and in fact it hurts the series, if anything.